Blunder has been a Pokemon YouTuber for over a decade and remains one of the most prominent competitive singles channels to this day. And there's a reason for that. Not only are his videos entertaining and hilarious, he's a very skilled player who has been active in the singles tournament scene since Gen 6. And if you thought his talents were exclusive to just Pokemon, you'd be wrong. Blunder has expanded his influence elsewhere as a business mogul and CEO of one of the world's leading fashion organizations. L'Agence, and also operates as the current leader of a secretive cult-like institution known as The Agency. Blunder, thank you for joining me today. How are you? Thank you, Jimothy. You made me sound like 10 times more impressive <laughs> than I am. So I appreciate you. I'm good. I'm glad that we're finally able to do some type of collab. Of course, we're going to be doing one on my channel too, for all of you watching just so you have a heads up. I'm looking forward. Yeah, but thank you for having me. Looking forward to this. And I want to say thank you so much for tweeting out my channel and shouting me out. I did appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've known about, I've known about your channel for a long time. I think the first time I, I saw your channel, if I go back, is January. And I showed it to, I showed your channel one of the videos to my bro Sama, who I do most of my, like I, I talk to him a lot about YouTube stuff. And I said, this guy's channel is good. Let's circle back to this channel in a few months and look where his channel is. And then I was like, oh, this guy's really doing numbers because I like your content. It's good. <laughs> I really like the uh, the informational way to go about content. We saw it with Freeze Eye. We saw it with False Swipe Gaming. And then we saw it with your channel, which you put your own spin on it. So I really like like the revitalization of Generation 3, that kind of thing. Sometimes I think about the generations I came up playing, 5, 6, and 7. Now we're on Generation 9. So I really admire how you were able to bring back attention to an older generation like Generation 3 and give it a lot of prominence. Like people don't see generation three as an old gen anymore. They see it as its own game within Pokemon, which I think is really good. Even uh, generation three, which I haven't played in years, but I did play uh, a couple games actually in a tournament, just like for fun back in the day, smoke on premier league match here and there and that kind of thing. But I always enjoyed generation three. It's like a very mechanical way to play. And I also like enjoy the Pokemon that you can use in that tier. Yeah, there's so many classics like meta Salamence. Yeah, just cool I remember Pokemon. I wasn't, I mean, I wasn't too good ever at Generation 3. So I remember I always used the same core every game. It was uh, Bolt Beam, Calm Mind Jirachi, Doug Trio, Spinner, Cloyster, <laughs> or Claydol, something like that. That every sounds game, all right. Same thing. It's pretty good. Kind Doug Rachi is a common combo. Yeah. <laughs> I thought I saw like a tweet or something. You said you weren't super fond of Gen 3. Or maybe is it like you just haven't played it as much? I haven't played it as much. If I had to do my... Well, usually when I when I talk about Gen 3, um, most of my friends, like my close online, like competitive friends, they all really, really love Gen 3. Like they're always talking it up. That's like my friends... That's Because my friends I talk the most about, like competitive mods too, are like McMegan, uh, oh, yeah, CBB, he's... ABR, and they all love ADV. So sometimes I'll just come in there and be like, who cares about ADV? Let's talk about Gen 7, <laughs> just to like derail the conversation. Right. But no, I definitely, no, I uh, I think I got respect for every generation. When it comes to the gens that I, I don't like playing the most, it's probably 2 and 1, and then 3 and 4, but I don't, I don't have a problem with any particular generation. It's just been a long time since I have played it, and uh, obviously I've never been truly ingrained in the competitive community of either of those gens. Because when I started, it was after that. So you said you started like Gen 5 or was it Gen 6? I looked back at some of your earliest videos and it's all Gen 6 stuff. Yeah, so I started playing like the first time I started understanding the game was the end of 2012, I think. So that was Gen 5, Black and White 2. So I want to say that I started playing for sure in Black and White 2. And then I started posting around then as well. And then when ORS, or not ORS, when X and Y came out later on in 2013, uh, that's when I joined Smogun and became active on there. Because I wasn't on Smogun at all, because Pokemon Online had its own community and stuff like that back in the day when Gen 5 uh Yeah, I was remember playing gen. on Pokemon Online back then. Yeah, so that was like our whole th uh, thing back then. Because Showdown, I think Showdown did uh, start being used a lot when 2012, yeah, when 2012 rolled around. Um, that's when Showdown started being used a bit more, but... To us, like me and a lot of my friends, uh, CTC, CBB, Joey, all the guys I've recorded with over the years, we all just stuck to PO. Um, I'm like, as like you know it, since you've been around for so long, you know how the community has changed over the years. Back then, PO definitely had like a, a valuable spot that just doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, I remember the transitional period when Showdown was first coming mm -hmm. out. Some people still preferred uh, PO, but now like Showdown, yeah, obviously, but not obviously dead. Yeah. And credits to Showdown because it is an amazing website. Team Builder is also really good. That was the one thing I, I always preferred for PO. I thought their team builder was superior, but 
over time, you know, you grow accustomed to stuff. I feel like the PO and... team builder sucked. Didn't you have like, really? <laughs> you have to save the teams as files on your computer or something? Yeah, you do. You do. That was weird. <laughs> when, you, when you put it like that, it makes it sound like PO is garbage. I remember like losing, that, I had to put though. my, I remember putting my PO teams on a USB and bring them to school. Dude, now that you, now that you <laughs> mention it, it's horrible because when you go to load a team, it'll show like a thousand files and they'll all be a white square with a name. You don't even know what the six Pokemon yeah. are on any of the teams. I think no, I had I know folders exactly. for them. <laughs> Dude, now I know exactly what you mean. Like I would make a good team and then I would name it something stupid. Like team.team or something. And then I would be like, oh, fuck, what did I call that team? And it'd be gone in the void. I just forget what it was called over. PO Classic. Yeah. You've been on the showdown in the showdown YouTube community for ages. I didn't really mm -hmm. watch showdown content back then, even though I was playing the game. What was the YouTube community like all the way back then? I want to say that nowadays, uh, competitive content matters more to people. I don't think it didn't matter as much back then, but it was way more like, at least back in the day when showdown content was a little bit more new, I think people really did not uh, prefer the competitive aspect. And as so it was just a lot of showdown lives and personality stuff, which is why because back when I posted Showdown Lives, there weren't too many people posting. PokeMMD, I think he's like one of the first people to have posted the PO Lives. Um, and so there were a few people that would consistently post uh, Showdown Lives and we'd collaborate and all that kind of stuff. But I think eventually for people, it got a little bit stale even after, you know, two, three years just because there's only so many variations of stuff you can do it. Then we go forward and the scene starts to change and it starts to give a little bit more attention to competitive. And then I think the content could also change to competitive. I think you see a lot more tournament based videos now. I used to play a lot more tournaments back in 2017, uh, 18, 19. But content wise, I didn't really prioritize posting it as much. Um, it's not like if a video doesn't do well, we don't want to post it like that's I mean, it can be discouraging. But at the end of the day, the content we post, we have a genuine desire to post good content when it comes to Pokemon. We want the viewers to learn. We want to be proud of what we put out and that kind of thing. Um, but even then, back then, tournament content, it just seemed like Showdown Live content was just better. Uh, tournament content, a lot of the time, to me, it just seemed it was a little bit difficult for people to understand. You also have to, like, I would I would bring up, like, a backstory, like, oh, look, I'm back in Smogon Tour playoffs. I'm playing this guy. They'll be like, oh, I remember Solon from your last video and that kind of thing. But I felt it was a little bit hard to make, like, the competitive viewer base kind of, like, pop out. And then again, fast forward, and we have so many people who have done a fantastic job of elevating it plus the game has just become bigger in general people are more into it they're going to go and research their own thing find out you know the competitive aspects of it but of course shout outs to ball swipe gaming breeze eye yourself obviously and there's so many other names that i could forget I'm not leaving anybody out it's just you know there's so many people but i really did like how the the focus has kind of changed and now i have noticed in the last like year or two all very competitive based tournament based even smogon based videos they do pretty well um and not even just from like a, oh this got a lot of views this got a lot of likes the interactions with the content is pretty good people are trying to learn but appreciate watching something at a higher level and i really like that um because the worst thing that i think can happen with the game is it gets dumbed down too hard yeah i mean some of the smoke on tournaments are kind of a hard sell they got all pretty complicated formats like the team tournaments For sure. i mean just using a forum yeah. Even though I played simulators for years, I didn't actually get into the Smogon Tawny scene until like 2019, I think, mm -hmm. because it was always just a bit intimidating. Oh, for sure. I think it's cool. We're making it a bit more accessible these days. Yeah, definitely. We even have videos um, on YouTube. I know uh, Pokia made one, Freeze, I made one, I think, called How to Join Smogon Tournaments, just because using a forum like that can be intimidating. Uh, I know for myself, I don't know if I, I mean, the first year I played competitive Mons, uh, I just played on PO. And I was, I felt like I was pretty decent at the game. I got number one on the ladder in OU and that kind of thing. And I felt like I was pretty good, which is why I went on to Smogon to start competing. But I don't think I would have ever gone to Smogon or it would have taken a long time if it weren't for all my friends at the time who were already playing. Like when I had just started playing and I was playing on ladder and stuff, my friends like CTC and CBB, they were already playing Smogon Premier League like three and four, which is like, good God, it's like a decade ago now. That I think about it so to me it was always like oh okay I'm gonna play tournaments but again not everybody has that experience where it's just like oh that's what's next like the game is huge now there's so many different things we have draft as a whole which is its own very successful format in this game it has nothing to do with smoking or any of that stuff and they thrive very well so I love how much the growth has has been since it'll be interesting to see how my tournament does I don't know if you've seen I'm hosting a gen 3 tournament no I have not actually take a look i'm trying to make it like more accessible to people like it was open and you just join a discord with a little google sheet 
And okay. I'm kind of inspired by Smash Bros. Melee, where they have these commentary duos that everyone knows. It's kind of, if you're just a casual fan, even though it's a really complicated game, you can watch it. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy to understand. Oh, yeah. And I think uh, Gen 3 has that potential too. Like, even if you're not super into the game, it's it's fun when you see like a good prediction or like some flashy oh, yeah. play. Like, it's just easy to understand. Agreed, agreed. Everyone's played Pokemon. So mm -hmm. I think we could do a lot more to make it accessible. Where a lot of the content is kind of really analysis based, like BKC doing a deep dive onto Gen 4 Ubers tournaments or something, like some really elaborate thing. But I think it'd be cool to make a product that like the average person could just enjoy. Yeah, I agree. Because that's how I've always felt about Showdown, right? It's the most digestible version of Pokemon. And even then, uh, there's still an obvious learning curve to Pokemon. Gen 3 does have that on its side of like the simplistic of it not that it's a simple gen but it's just a very like it's just a very concrete not solved but it just the way it plays out feels very sturdy right yeah, it's like it's like the best stuff it just feels like work, the best yeah. player usually wins yeah that's how i feel i usually feel like the person who's playing better wins the game which is the sign of like the best generation usually like all my friends they all said that gen 3 is the best ou by far that's what they all tell me that's what i think in my experience too i've played them all mm -hmm. a little bit like yeah so i gotta respect it because i haven't played them all so i really can't or I haven't played them all at the right level, so I can't really claim ones over the other. So I, I respect it when they say, because they always tell me, they're like, no, three is definitely the best. And I'm like, hmm. All right, let me make note of that. <laughs> when I was watching your older content, I noticed it was very like serious and analytical. And it's so different to how you are today, where I think of you like a comedy channel almost, more than, you know, serious gameplay. Like you're queuing up with mm -hmm. some ridiculous Pokemon or... And it's, it's yeah. <laughs> more about the flashiness and like you as a personality mm -hmm. than than anything else. It, did that transition happen like naturally where you just got more comfortable and started expressing your humor more? Or was there like a point where you changed your mind on the direction of your channel in that way? I think that's your biggest strength as a channel. The analytic? Your sense of humor and your personality. Oh, oh appreciate it a lot. Um, oh, I've always been really blessed with YouTube. Uh, just that, you know, my viewer base has been very accepting of like my personality and that kind of thing and supportive too. I mean, that obviously helped my own self-esteem, self-confidence, that kind of thing. Started my channel when I was 13. I used to be self-conscious about my voice and all this stuff too. Um, so I remember as my channel grew and there was like a lot of support, I remember feeling like really good. Um, and you know, you just, you just feel good, right? You're a teenager, everybody deals with that kind of thing. So I never had my channel, I think, as like a way to like, when I, <laughs> the reason I made my channel, I'll never forget, I even, I had this conversation on, a skype or something back in the day and no hate at all to show food that's one of my boys like that's that's my bro like it's there's no hatred but i remember I, I told one of my friends i was like dude these guys are not even good i don't understand how show keeps posting well i think i need to post bro that's what i told one of my friends i'm like dude i should be posting i don't understand why all these guys are posting videos and they're not even that good just you know just being cocky and that kind of thing but i started posting i started really liking it i would get just crushed all the time on the smoke on wi-fi battle finder and that kind of thing i wasn't some great player or anything but i had a real like i don't want to say addiction to pokemon but i was very like i must get better like there's no there's nothing else to me with at least in the beginning there was nothing to me besides being the best like i, re I truly wanted to be the best player i really loved the game i love the prediction system um the only thing i don't like in pokemon is like team building and i don't even dislike team building it's just not one of my favorites because playing in battle is just too much fun for me so i think up until the point where i won smogon tour which took me about five years to do um well not five years five years from when i started playing mons i tried my first attempt at smogon tour was in 2016 uh in the spring and i won the 2018 spring season um that brought me a lot of closure to just everything that for me in pokemon because that was the one tournament i wanted to win the most and it was that tournament i don't think i would have been satisfied if i won another tournament um i made it to the official smogon tournament finals like way back like my first year on smogon but i lost that um and i remember at the time it didn't crush me that much because i was like 15 years old or something and i just didn't think oh I, I like i didn't even think that i really not that i deserved it but just like I, I was still fresh to the game, it felt like, so I wasn't so, cr like, it didn't feel to me like, oh my god, I've been working for this forever. Um, so after I, I ended up winning Smoke on Tour, I remember, I felt very like, thank god I won. Like, it almost for, like, my own personal, like, not even, it completely passed the game. It was more just proving to myself that, like, 
if I put my head towards something, I can really do it. So I think it must have came out a lot in my content as well, because I was always just trying to be like sharp and get to the to the next step. That's not to say that now I'm like not like that. I think I just kind of go in waves because I would say right after that 2018 Smoke on Tour, I really didn't play uh, for the next fall. It was the first time I didn't play Smoke on Tour either in two years because I just felt satisfied. Came back the next year for SPL after not playing for six months. And uh, we went to the finals, got to the tiebreaker. I ended up losing in the tiebreaker. That's the infamous Swamper Willow Wisp and all that. Um, but I do remember after coming back after six months, the level I was playing was probably my highest level ever and higher than Smoke on Tour, at least in my opinion. I know some of my friends that have told me like, oh, you were good here, here. But I do think that that in like SPL 10, it was like my highest level ever played. And then I stopped playing after that for a long time because finished school, that kind of thing. Things come up, but Recently, I got back into the tournament scene, and I think it started to show, at least in my tournament content, how integrated I am still with the game. Because when it comes to playing in tournament, I want nothing more than to win still, just like the majority of competitors. But I mean, I've been around competing for forever. So if I am going to play in a tournament, like I will give it 100%. Like I have to win, at least. You know what I mean? Not like from a crazy or anything, but just, you know what it is in Pokemon, the community, you got rivalries, you got all this stuff. Um, I, I hope with my content, I can continue to do it. I really like in tournament tournament uh, series that I can watch from like a third person, like OLT playoffs, for example. I can't wait to post more of those just because I can give that the full analytical drop down. I've never been good at recording my own games live. It's just not for me. I make plays extremely fast. And I think that if I uh, record them, sometimes I start to overthink and create situations that just could not possibly exist. But if I'm recording, I'll sometimes just be talking so much for the sake of uh, content purposes that I might even just bring up something that couldn't exist, which is, this happened to me before in like a showdown live where it's just the other opponents taking so long. So I just keep talking about the game and then I just decide that the Landorus has a random fifth move that it for sure won't have, but it's, it, you know, something like that can happen. Um, so I guess for me now, it's just about finding a battle because I like making entertaining stuff, but at the end of the day, I don't want, I, I, I want people to know that this channel is about the competitive scene especially OU because I do think that I have an experience in the OU tier and tournaments and all that stuff that is hard to come across for the most part and so I like having that lane carved out I, I've personally found it pretty balance pretty hard to balance the you know try hard competitive mindset with you know content creation yeah, I feel like the mm. videos take so much time it's hard to yeah. put all my energy back into competing it's been hard for me to balance that and I guess I'm transitioning more from a competitor into like a community figure, I guess, which is kind of cool and kind of unfortunate at the same time. I feel like I know exactly what you mean. You almost feel like a, not a burden, but a responsibility for the game. At least that's how I feel. I do, I do feel like a, a responsibility to help the game grow. I feel like you're probably starting to feel like that as well. You see how many people watch your videos, how many people are interested in the game. And then you sort of realize your position in there. You're like the one link that not like it's just you or something like that but you know what i mean you're a link that can take that person from watching your video to getting into the game and then the game goes up they show their friends etc cetera, etc cetera. so i think with this tournament you're about to have some really good uh success and also just it, it'll so. probably be very exciting to see you know what type of players get into it and that kind of thing i love these like discord tournaments um just off smoke on tournaments just ran like money prize just community ran that stuff is really good it's uh it always shows that the game is not confined to one website or one community. Yeah, I remember you entered the Kalos Crew Challenge, I think. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I enjoyed that one a lot. Uh, I'd never played in any Kalos tournaments ever. And I know he's been hosting tournaments for five, six years. And I just joined it on a whim. One of my buddies is like, let's join. A lot of people who talk it are, are playing, you should play. I was like, yeah, let me play. <laughs> I, was just, I thought it would be fun. And I had a blast. We got second place, unfortunately classic but it was fun that's a cool tournament idea if you guys don't know it's a three person team tournament and you have to play against another team of three random generations and then you choose which which of your team plays the random gen it rewards you for being a more versatile player who's yeah dabbles in every gen Absolutely. that's like gives you such an advantage Thank God. my tiers were four and eight and i won in eight like i smashed in four um and my uh one of my teammates Poek, we had him play Gen 2, Gen 3, and Gen 1. He won all of them. And so I was just like, damn, <laughs> that's impressive, you know? <laughs> I I got knocked out in the first round, my team. 
I was playing Gen uh, 4 against Conflict, and he I've, I've never been oh, more no. owned in my life. I think he's really good at, I think he's really good at Gen <laughs> he's 4. Really, so. He's really f***ing good in general. <laughs> said I've never been owned like that before. I know that feeling. I got crushed, too, though. I think the guy brought, like, the same team, too, which is the ultimate disrespect. <laughs> so many people watching, too. I was a little embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, that's how I felt. They were like, oh, Blunder's playing? And then I was like, please don't watch this. <laughs> Up by sure. I wanted to ask you about your thumbnails because I think your thumbnails are so funny and ridiculous. They're just like, <laughs> I feel like when you're making your thumbnails, you're just like, I really appreciate like, how that can question. I, how can I make the stupidest thing possible? There's literally, one like Joe literally. Rogan is interviewing King Gambit. Literally, literally. <laughs> so I used to always have like a really bad stock thumbnails. I used to actually be like really self conscious about my thumbnails. Like, I used to really, really hate my thumbnails. I would say this is like four years ago. Um, back when before people started making their thumbnails like just crazy shit it is now um and i like the, the the way thumbnails have gone on to become like some people get mad about like oh why does everyone have to put arrows and shit in the title i mean in the thumbnail but like in my opinion it literally looks good regardless of what the content i'm watching is sometimes i need to know what to look at on the thumbnail <laughs> there's a lot going on but i think one day i was just Fucking around in Photoshop. My old thumbnails used to always be the same shit. I put two Pokemon and then I put the word showdown, aka the most unappealing thumbnail possible. And then one day I was just, I don't know, I was just fucking around making a thumbnail. And I gotta give credits to my buddy Sama, because he was in call with me. And he was like, why can't you put something like, why can't you put some bullshit on your thumbnail? And I was like, dude, I don't want my video to get flagged or something. And he was like, dude, I think you should just start changing it up. And I think that's one of the biggest things with YouTube uh, for a lot of people. They'll just because it's not like my channel was doing bad or nothing it was doing fine doing good uh, i'd say but like when you're uploading on youtube every youtuber has felt this way at some point where they're like i'm fucking bored of the content i'm making i feel like switching something up even if it doesn't work i need to at least see if something changes that is good because i'm just bored of making the same thing over and over again i feel like every youtuber will for sure or has hit that point at some point um with their content and so that's how I felt. I was like, dude, I'm so bored of this show on live, show on live, show on live. I can definitely spice this up a little bit. So I started posting old tournament stuff and just Pokemon as a whole. There's some funny Pokemon art out there, as you know. A lot of the time I just look up the Pokemon name and then I put the word meme after it. And there will be some <laughs> images that are just out of this world. <laughs> like this one. Like, some some of community. these are so old too, dude. Like You'll see like some 20 year old like Pokemon meme from like nine gag or some shit, you know, like Machamp with a funny face. And sometimes it's just perfect. It's just perfect. And of course, shout outs to all the extremely talented artists out there as well. I've been really fortunate to meet a lot of talented people through the community, Twitter, Mutuals, and uh, they're just amazing um, at drawing Pokemon stuff. Huge shout outs to, uh, I want to give a, the biggest shout outs to uh, Scarzig, actually. He makes like 99% of Joey's thumbnails uh, when it comes with the custom Pokemon art. He draws them very fast, and I think he's very, very good at his at his skill. Oh, I've seen those. Yeah, those are really good. Yeah, really good. And it, he can do them extremely fast, keeps it varied. Um, and I think that's good. I think people should definitely just get crazy with their thumbnails. It doesn't have to be outrageous. I definitely have some thumbnails where it's like, what is even going on in this bullshit <laughs> thumbnail? Like, it's like, there's like three Pokemon on there when there's only supposed to be two and that kind of thing. And I've definitely had some situations where I thought a thumbnail was crazy. Like crazy good and then i posted the video and the optics were not good thumbnail thumbnail is important i have a lot more difficulty with titles always than i do with thumbnails thumbnails it sometimes feels like a creative canvas i can just throw whatever i want in there but i don't like like sometimes i've had a video that i'm ready to post and i didn't post it till three hours later because i wasn't satisfied with the thumbnail thumbnail is a big thing like i, I take ages doing my thumbnails right the titles. yeah yeah one of my guys uh like one of my friends his channel is way bigger than mine he has like he has a million, a million subscribers. And he told me, he was like, dude, I have a guy that does my thumbnails. And then he told me how much he paid. And I'm like, dude, that's too, like, I wouldn't, like, first off, I don't want anyone to really do my thumbnails for the most part, because I have a, I like doing them and they're kind of crazy. Sometimes I think only I'm going to be able to like figure out what I want. But he told me, he's like, I felt like it would take me five, six hours just to make the thumbnail. And then he told me that it felt like he, he was putting more time into his thumbnails than he was even his videos. And I was like, dude, I get it. Cause you, that's the first thing they see, right? That's like- It's one of the most important things. If you had a, if, if, if you had a dating profile, that would, that would be your first picture, the thumbnail. Yeah, yeah. So it, it has to be a 10 out of 10 thumbnail. <laughs> and that's pretty, that's pretty important. So you can definitely stress over that. I mean, again, content is content. I don't want anyone watching this to also think like, I could make the best video in the world, but if I don't have an alluring thumbnail, who cares? It's definitely not true. 
I, to this day, I post stuff with bad thumbnails. It's not like everything is a hit. But yeah, you should be creative with it. Just make each thumbnail different than the last one is what I think. There should be some cohesion, but I, like you want the viewer to think like, oh, this is not just a rehash of yesterday's team with a one mon change. You know, I think a lot of YouTubers can get like a bit too over analytical of the thumbnails. That's why I kind of like your thumbnails because mm -hmm. it's like you're having fun with it and it fits mm -hmm. your personality. Like mm -hmm. they're just so ridiculous. And then you in the videos are messing around. I love the one where sure. it's just like, it's like the title is this needs to be banned. And then it's three orth worms <laughs> in, next to each other smoking cigarettes. <laughs> it's just like... I, I like saw that with, on my homepage. I was like, oh my God. It's like, how is this? <laughs> Oh man, that's a classic. I, was, I literally remember posting that, and then my, my friend Sama was like, "Yo, are you allowed to post cigarette imagery? Are you gonna get flagged?" I was like, "I guess we're gonna find out." I'm sure that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I think it's fine. But yeah, you can definitely be a uh, like titles and thumbnails, um, and I'm I'm sure you know it as well. Like, I feel like sometimes you you just kind of know also, like when a title will elevate the video, and like you just know in your head, sort of. Sometimes it, it can take a while to like get that uh get that right title but sometimes like when i saw your vid the melee of competitive pokemon i was like oh I, when i saw the thumbnail and the title i was like oh this is like a perfect yeah I've, i had that video in my head for like months yeah see that's exactly <laughs> what i mean that's something that i know you you had it you you, you knew it was gonna pop off when you made it it was just yeah. i gotta make it good and you did so perfect yeah that's my proudest yeah. video i think i uh usually do my oh, videos yeah. in just a day like i just rush them mm -hmm. out but that one i took a couple days oh really yeah wow yeah. You're very good then if you're able to do your videos in a day because I've always thought you're uh, like you're editing like, yeah, I would say that it looks simple, but it's very like good transition wise. Like there's no extra time. There's no dead space. Like it's I like your editing. So if you're able to do it in a oh, day, thanks, that's very man. impressive. Yeah, no doubt. I, I mean, good edit. Good editing is like beyond important. Take it from me because I never edit because I'm not good at it. So when I see good edited content put in like short form, I'm very impressed because I mean, that's what it's all, all about. If I make a video like yours, it's going to be 30 minutes because I'm not good at this type of content, unfortunately, yet. Yeah, it's, um, it didn't used to take me a day. It took, used to take me uh, a couple of days, but I've gotten sure, the, sure. the process. Of, like, it's just kind of the same kind of content every time. So yeah. I've done it so much that I'm so used to it. Now I can do it in yeah, a day. Yeah, absolutely. I like your thumbnails, too. You, d you definitely have always had the good thumbnail. The speech <laughs> bubble meta, we'll have to give that to Jimothy. The that's, speech that bubble meta, that's, yeah. yours. that's yours. That's yours. That's yours. The speech bubble meta is yours. <laughs> it's crazy when I when I see some videos on my homepage sometimes with the speech bubbles. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm the ripple effect up. <laughs> <It's> crazy. <laughs> literally, literally. <laughs> I think I saw you do it in one of your thumbnails. Like, hell of course. yeah. Hell yeah. It's like the speech bubble is classic. I was like, this is good. The that's, the best thing I, that's my best idea, I think. It's a good one, dude. It's a good I like it. Because <laughs> it's like, how do you how do you explain some things? Fuck it. The speech bubble will do it. I think one of the first ones I saw from you was what's who's the moon Pokemon? Lunatone. And it was another Pokemon, and the speech bubble said, "You're out of this world." And I was oh, like, that "Dude, was this Roaring is... Moon." Because it's I was like, "This is funny." Moon. I was like, "I gotta watch." I was like, "I gotta watch this video." <laughs> what is this? Shit? That's a classic. I wanted to say, I think um, a lot of the times when like a YouTuber has a nickname for their audience, it's kind of cringe or lame. Yeah. But I think like the agency is one of the best ones I've heard. Something about it yeah. is just. It, it's got this mystique to it. Yeah, Sounds that, cool. That, the agency ended up working really well in a non non corny way because it's not too overdone, I'd say, or not like too. Is is? I mean, there was definitely a time where people would get annoyed in my comments. They'd be like, "This guy doesn't even speak English anymore. It's just agency. This agency that." <laughs> and that, and I, I I do clearly remember that because <laughs> around 2020. I was playing in Small Gun Premier. I wasn't even seeing GG. I would say like agency, <laughs> like not even talking. Like and people were like, "Okay, this needs to stop." But it just the agency thing just happened one day. I remember uh, my buddy Sama, the fucking endless fountain of good ideas. Much love to him. He was just like, "We need something new. We need to start something new." I'm like, "You're telling me I'm bored." And so then he he had told me for years, he's like, we need to start the agency within the channel. Like th this is like a year or two ago. He told me this thing. And I was like, I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, I have school to do. Let's discuss this at a later time. And then one day randomly, I, was, I had not posted for a month because exams had me bogged and I had just lost Smogon Tour tiebreak finals. And I remember around that time on Smogon when I had lost tiebreaker finals, I was really infamous on the site because I was, I was, I was super bad. Like I was talking to everybody. My team was in the finals. They, everybody wanted our team to lose. And I was, I kept saying like, 
my team's never going to lose. You all suck. I can't wait to win and show you all how good we are. And then I lost and everybody was on my ass. So I was like, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm off smoke. I'm for a month. Nobody contact me. <laughs> Even in my, my most safe group chat, they were like, F you, you got owned. And I was like, okay, I'm out of here. I'm not staying around. So I didn't post for a month or two. And then or, it was more of a month. Definitely not two. And then my boy Sam was like, let's switch it up. Let's, let's just do something new. You need to have some fun with the stuff. I was like, you're right. I mean, it just started as something funny, right? It just say agency, agency, making some new Where vibes. Where did it come from? Was it just a random idea? It was, it, it, so, so Sama, if you, if you, if I look up agency on my channel and I go back 1 million years, I, it's impossible for me to find it now because there's so many agency comments. But back in 2018, 2017, my boy Sama would comment on my videos like, very good the agency is watching just weird stuff like oh. that it's just super <laughs> weird stuff and i even remember after the the agency happened and i i told this exact thing one time and people couldn't even believe it because they were like you mean there's no like they're like what is the what is the real reason that it came to be and then i remember some someone started saying some funny rumor or something and they were like it wasn't even supposed to be the agency the, the, they're actually saying that Sama wanted to call it the syndicate, but Blunder said it has to be called the agency and just a bunch. And I just could not stop laughing. I was like, yeah, these guys thought we had a bunch of these in the back waiting. Like, oh, if the agency doesn't pop off, we always got the syndicate. I mean, we got the cabal. <laughs> it was just too funny to me. But yeah, um, I feel like the, the whole agency thing, it really made me enjoy Mons again because it made me take it from a more lighthearted perspective. I still love competing. I still love like playing well that kind of hyper analytical content which i'm always going to have on my channel um admittedly it's a bit less now uh that's you know easy to see but i would say that it revived mons a bit for me it gave me something else to i don't know if play for is the correct answer because i've always felt like i played for the fans even when i wanted to like win i have like that is something i take pride in i'm an extremely entertaining player when it comes to the tournament stuff like i have my play style is just entertaining because that's the way i like to play i like to play for the fans for sure i feel like it gave me a different way to kind of enjoy the game i still like com competing and all that too like i said but uh it just it just gave me like a fun new sort of thing we got I, like we made up the whole agents sort of uh vibe too we got to use a lot of underrated pokemon and brand it like that which is always fun just you know like like we keep talking about Sometimes the content can get repetitive and even we can psych ourselves out playing the same game so much. So it definitely made it fresh for me, like really fresh and gave me a, like a new love for the game. That's one of the best things to do if you're tilting is just like load up something stupid and just go for some stupid plays. It's, yeah, yeah. And yeah, 100%. remember that the game is fun. Like it's, it's supposed to be fun. Exactly. This is this is my favorite game. So when it's not my favorite game, it's like I'm not going to press it. I tried. Uh, I'm a really big advocate of taking breaks. And I know it's tough for content creators as well. I do it sometimes where I just go off the map. Like I haven't posted in like eight or nine days right now, which is pretty bad. I definitely need to get to it, but I've had a lot of stuff going on. Last thing I really want to do is play the game at the moment. Uh, I will, of course, but it's just, it's, it's just healthy. Like we see this game every day for the most part. You got to give it the, like a healthy balance is what I think, especially with competing. Um, I mean, I don't know how many people watching this are currently in Smogon tournaments, but I'm sure there are a couple uh, I think that's a that's one of the biggest things to me with competing like do not do not burn out don't play every single tournament don't always think like oh I need to be winning this or winning that because you'll get to a point where winning will not feel as good as losing feels bad and then you're going to be stuck because you're going to not even want to play poker because the emotions will just be too messed up for you. I agree. I definitely had an era where I was just entering every gen 3 tournament that existed and it yeah. was like I have to I'm in Australia, so it's kind of annoying scheduling matches sometimes. Oh, I can imagine. I can, I can imagine for sure. I have to do like early morning or late at night. So if I've got like four tournaments since to play that week, it's kind of <laughs> like I'm distraught. I was working. I remember once I played at like 5 a.m. before work. It's, it's like, oh, like, what am I doing? Yeah, <laughs> what am I doing? Literally. And then in your mind, it's just, I have to win. It's not even like, oh, can't wait to use my team. Can't wait to blah, blah, blah. It's just, I'm up at 5 a.m. I better win or I'm going to be mad. Yeah you're in a bad yeah. mindset immediately immediately right you're in a like oh i die if i lose my it's just it's not the way the game is supposed to be played sucks losing in the early morning it ruins your whole mood for the rest of the day oh dude i com <laughs> i completely completely agree like i i can't even like even at this this age now i'm i just turned 25 but i remember last year so i i, I lost a tournament game in scl in championship league and i was playing good and it was one turn where i knew i made the wrong play and i and i literally told myself Definitely do not do this play. And I did it anyway. And then I just lost the game. It was like narrow 1-0 or 2-0. But when I made that play, I lost. And it was around like 1 or 2 p.m. 
and I had some plans later to go do something. And I just remember I was like, I'm not doing anything today. I'm sad. I just shouldn't have lost that game. And it's like, I played a hundred plus team tour games. How can this one game tilt me like this? And it's you'll always be, you That's know, the, the game will always you have have this gut feeling that what you're about to do oh, is going to lose you the game, but you click it anyway. Uh, that happens. You so click often. it and you, oh, dude. And it's just like afterwards, I'm just like. I'm so disappointed in myself. Some you know? losses don't feel as bad. I think that's the worst way. When you, you oh, kind of yes. knew that you were making a misplay, but somehow you, you didn't have it in you to... <laughs> yeah, and then the loss afterwards, I just think to myself, like, it's all my fault. It's not, it's all my fault. Like, whatever, forget the opponent. He didn't even do shit. I lost it for myself. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what do you think your favorite OU format of all time is? I usually openly say it's seven, which it took me a while for that to happen when seven came out and was the was the new gen uh, initially i thought it was a pretty fun but bad generation from a competitive standpoint i thought it was really lacking uh, i thought stall was extremely overpowered it was the doug trio mega sableye era and, and yeah and that and that destroyed our tier for a full year before doug trio was banned which was really just awful. that took a year like, I, I didn't think that was a year yeah no no it was a year let me uh -huh. i mean i believe you, you. I just, yeah yeah it was, i did play back then I, yeah it's crazy it's really it's it's and, I, and i'll tell you this as well it's a zygarde uh 20 months to get banned i remember zygarde i used zygarde yeah because even when i won smoke on tour zygarde was allowed i used it in round one i didn't use it in the rep but it was allowed uh when seven first came out i did think yeah seven is whack i don't really i didn't care much for it but as time went on i really i fell in love with that tier more than any other tier six is where i became a top player and I really connected with six, but seven to me always felt like an extension of Gen Six. It always felt like Gen Six point five to me, and that's why I felt like I like connected with it so easily. And in tournament, I feel like seven was so much fun to play. Um, I felt like you could show off the most. I think in six and seven you can show off the most in 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 playing. That's not to say in other gens you can't swag or make crazy plays. This is doable in every. I've seen some insane plays. I've seen my boy Somalia play Gen Four. An earthquake turn one on a flying type as they bring in Jirachi. I've seen him make that play in like three games straight. That kind of thing. Like you can make amazing plays in every generation. That's not to say that. But for me specifically, those two generations, I just, I love those like anything. I could just play friendlies in six and seven. It's very close. They're like one degree away from each other. But if I have to pick one, like if you ask me, you can only play one generation for the rest of your life. I'd pick seven every time. Gen seven on you. The, there's the most amount of variety for me in in the preview gens. That's how I, I divide the game for myself. Preview and non-preview. Because I'm mostly interested in the preview gens. That's where I've given all my time and understanding towards. And I think in the preview gens, seven is the one that allows you to use the most Pokemon and the most strategies. I think... Like Gen 7 I use super fun, but it's also just kind of, it's kind of ridiculous with uh, like Z moves are one of the craziest concepts. Just oh, yeah. destroy something. It's kind of like epic. You can make some great plays, but it's also kind of stupid at the same time. I, I agree with you on that. And I feel like right now 7 is in a pretty gross uh, position. It's everyone is using the same sort of team structures and it's, it's become very uh, cyclical. People bring like this hyper offense cheese with Volcarona, Cresselia, Suicune. Or they bring the exact Tyranitar, Toxapex, Celesteela, Sand that everyone else is bringing. Or, you know, like a Scizor, Kieran B team. It's like everyone's bringing the same five teams in Gen 7. So it's desperately in need of a, a rehaul. Which I think will happen at some point. Uh, Smogon Masters is a new tournament coming up. So there will be a lot of Gen 7 attention. People will probably try to figure out, you know, how can we change up the boringness of this tier but i agree with you there's definitely a lot of stuff z i remember when z moves came out man there was so much controversy on z moves of course a lot of people wanted them banned just like you know we dealt with terrestrializing this i mean it's never been as controversial as it has been now with terra and then dynamax and generation 8 was pretty much uncontested ban it but z moves people were pretty back and forth about z, um, z moves but overall we ended up deciding that they were good to stay which I'm happy about. They can be chaotic. There's also some stuff in Gen 8, I mean, Gen 7 that's broken. Magirna's broken, in my opinion, but it's just one of those Pokemon that yeah. we're going to keep it around. We're going to keep it's, it around. It's one because, of those formats where, like, the broken stuff yeah. checks the broken stuff. You take one, it's like a Jenga block, everything. Yeah. I think if you took Magirna out, now Ash Greninja is the most broken thing of all time. Agreed, agreed. <laughs> and then we could even get we can even get to a point where, it's like, Mawile is now broken, Weavile is now broken, and the chain, Diancie's broken. Chain reaction will be ridiculous. Some people would say, like, you should do that and just ban 10 things. And then it's yeah, the exactly. Game. It's for some people like, well, then it's not Gen Seven anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think I think Seven 
is a i mean a, a couple of tiers are like this where it's like it's very it's a, it's a chaotic metagame but it is like the perfect chaotic metagame to me as chaotic as it is it is not too rough around the edges on any specific part like yes there are some strong mons but none of them are like too strong to where i'm like this is just not fun anymore i think the broken checks broken pretty well in this generation it might be in need of a rehaul and i'm also not gonna be i'm not also gonna be like on mic saying gen 7 is the most competitive gen because i don't believe that either but from a enjoyability perspective this is my number one the variety thing is a huge huge deal to me i love generation six you will never see me bring some shit like a mega sharpedo or a mega glalie in generation yeah. six like i brought in generation seven the most fun mon you'll see me bring in generation six is like thunderous eye or something like that you'll never see me bring something funny in gen 6 because gen 6 to me the best is the best by like 10 miles in gen 6 it's not the same in 7 z moves have given everybody a fair chance i definitely had a period i think exactly like what you said where, it, where at first i hated gen 7 and then i something clicked and i was like suddenly having a lot more fun i had this stupid team with uh Tokol and choice band victini <laughs> God, that's a and classic I, I was just like i actually got pretty highlighted with it and i remember like players using more standard stuff like celesteela mega sizzle <laughs> balance were just getting furious at me like this is so actually, stupid but uh, you can just two hit toxapex with uh vcreate and sun it's just so funny I, I, I literally believe you let me look at this this paste i just sent you i i brought this team to smoke on premier league in gen 7 game uh and i was on like a crazy win streak at this point oh, so i had yeah, just felt like oh I, I was like dude you'll love this team when i show when he said torque of Zaktini. and i was on a really good win streak up until this point so in my head i was like oh i'm the goat of gen 7 i got smashed i played volcarona and wrote a metacham and i got i got destroyed i was like it does, damn it it does suck when you play against heatran with this dude i was like how can you i was like dude please don't have a volcarona i look at my diancy no diamond storm i'm like oh, i'm finished i'm finished oh, no. <laughs> But no, Gen 7, stuff like this, even if it does look like fun, it's not as like bad as people might think. Like every, all this stuff has its Some has its offense role. teams in Gen 7 are just insane. I remember one with like belly drum slow puff and I think slacking, like slacking was random. And that was like actually all right. I, I used it. You can get crazy. Like Crawdont was really but, good. Oh yeah. Crawdont had its time in Gen 6. It's had its time in Gen 7. It even had its time in Gen 8. I had this team with uh, Specs Pelipa and Crawdont because... Well, that's a, that's a nasty core you, with the rain you can two hit ferrothorn <laughs> with crab hammer i think it was, <laughs> it was Jeez, like... i believe it i remember in uh in generation six one of my favorite so generation six was around the time people like i would say like a couple months after gen six came out and then people finally started giving a little bit of attention to crowd it was never no big threat but i remember back then in the beginning of gen six most of the rotom washes were mixed defense or fully spit f so if you had an adamant max speed uh, crawdont, you hit 209 speed. And a Rotom with zero speed would hit 208. So sometimes if you get that greedy player who has zero Rotom speed, you can go for the choice band <laughs> knockoff and it would just one hit KO Rotom. And I remember when, when I started when I started doing that, I was like, whoa, Crawdon is epic. Crawdon will always be one of my all-time favorite. Like, I know he's not good and he's especially not going to be good anymore because Samurott is his dad. But I cannot wait for Crawdon's return regardless because that's just one of those Pokemon that has always done me good. I love that guy. It's a stupid mon in the best way. Like, he could just kill everyone. Exactly. His BST is so bad. But then because of adaptability, he feels like he has 600 BST, so it's perfect. Yeah, I remember in Gen 7, I remember getting so mad against uh, stall teams that I was like, how can I just delete stall teams real quick? And I, I, I yeah. found Crawdon. Put is, SD Mystic awesome, Water dude. Crawdon on there. It is over. <laughs> That, that's also one thing with Gen 7 I, I like. I think Stall can be really good in Gen 7, but also every team has the tools to beat Stall. Unlike in Gen 6, where I think Stall is just bad, but that's my own opinion. There's just so many wall-breaking mechanics in Gen 7. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, you can bring a Stall team and you can play really well with it. Like, I have some Stall teams in Gen 7 that I I think are really good. Um, but every, every team is susceptible to the same thing. Strong attacks, knockoff, hazards against them. You know, everything can be outplayed. And it's the last generation before boots got introduced, and I don't like heavy duty boots as a whole. Same, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a that's a, like an OG opinion. A lot of OGs are just not a fan of boots. It's just random that they added this counterplay to hazards like eight generations in when we were dealing with stealth rock for like a decade. And we used to really, and we used to really cry about stealth rock like five gens ago. Now we finally have yeah, dealt it's like, with all it. Right, fine, we're, we're used to <laughs> finally accepted it, right? 
Like, I remember back in Gen 5, I used to literally be like, this is so stupid. Skarmory comes in and puts up spikes, <laughs> and Alakazam sweeps every game. This is the worst tier ever. That's kind of what I like about Gen 3 is there's no stealth rock. There's just spikes. So a lot of a lot of different, like Moltres yeah. is really good. Charizard's really good because of that. It does suck that stealth Never. rock just deletes half the game. But also, you know. Well, that's why I like Gengar so much too, back in Gen 3 as well. Because yeah. the, the guy's immunities feel so much better in Gen 3 than they do in any other gen. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a that's actually a good one. A uh, good point to bring up the spike versus stealth rock interaction. Since Gen three just doesn't have stealth rock, it's a whole different. Because I've seen a lot of games. You'll see. I mean, you'll you'll. See, I mean, you've seen this obviously, and you've probably done it as well. But you'll see in the Gen three games a lot of the time they'll have the lead versus the lead, and in the first two or three turns, one guy is going to double in his Skarmory, making the right prediction to already put those spikes up. Like we see that in so many Gen three games, where the double to Skarm comes out off the rip, so that they can just start getting up the spikes putting the game plan in motion that is what i like i feel like the scramble to make hazards is kind of it dominates so many of like most gens in the game this war to make rocks i like that in gen 3 it's a bit more gradual with just like one layer of spikes feels really impactful i wanted to ask you about uh some of your some of the catchphrases you use on your channel i don't really know what they mean but they intrigue me you often talk about getting <laughs> goobed <laughs> What is it? What does that okay. mean? It's like getting owned, getting all right, destroyed. All right, I'm gonna. All right, all right. If I if I reveal this to you though, Jimothy, this is this is some real, this is some real information. So once I reveal this to you, an exclusive, you're you're, stu you're stuck with me. Like can't turn your turn your back on me after I tell you. What this. Is, is it that deep? I thought it was just I a funny know, little word. <laughs> no, it's not that deep. I was just trying to be dramatic. Oh, okay. So so I'll tell you I'll tell you the backstory. So one day we were just chilling, me and CTC, and this was around the time so last last year when the game had just come out um generation nine my friend cbb had come from germany and those of you who don't know cbb my boy crash and boom bang he's a uh, great smoke on battler one of my earliest friends i've done so many videos with him uh he lives in germany he came to visit me in ctc in new york city and it was the first time i had met cbb um after like 10 years of meeting him and basically i have never played so much pokemon in my entire life until that time when the new game had come out and us three were just together and we just felt like like little kids just playing mons 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 all day all day and randomly i don't know why but just started saying he got goobed and we had said goobed before but it was and i was like whoa goobed the all-purpose is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? I guess it just depends. It just depends on your, it just depends. It depends on the vibe at the time. It just, <laughs> just not, so I don't know. It's, it's, I mean, it, for us, it's, it's just it's going on to everything. I'll be playing Fortnite with my, with my friends who don't even play Pokemon. I'll be like, I got gooped. Somebody come save me. And they'll be like, I got gooped. Somebody come get me. It's just an all purpose. I don't know what word I would come compare it to the most, but I prefer saying I got goobed as opposed to saying like I got fucked <laughs> in like a game. You know what I mean? It seems to only mean it's, that you got beat, like you got destroyed. For the most part, yeah. So there's there's two there's two ways to say it. Goobed, like you got crushed, or if you say goob before the word, where it's like, oh, I I got off the. <laughs> the, the, the one the goob. thing we say a lot is I got off the goob nut. <laughs> we always say. <laughs> Dude, Jimothy, you gotta you get, you gotta make sure I don't sound crazy in this video. We say that a lot in the, in the viz. We say I got off the goob nut, which means I just I destroyed him. I, it was right. the biggest, <laughs> yeah. it was the biggest, it was the biggest nut of all, the biggest beat down ever. I got off the goob nut, so we always be saying that too. So yes, that is some foul Thunder Blunder seven 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 lexicon. Goob is not going anywhere. It's gonna stay around for many, many years. I'm a fan of. I it. hope I was able to illuminate a bit. I'm sure I wasn't, but no, it's yeah. very, very intelligent stuff. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> it's honestly really funny. I'm happy that we were able to make our own language on the channel somehow. There's and it's also like... um, the word shyst. <laughs> What's up with that? What's that? <laughs> okay, shyst is an actual word. So it is in a lot of uh, yeah. Well, in a lot of like, I want to say specifically rap songs. I mean, I'm sure there's other stuff. But the word, the word shysty is an actual word. And that just means like when you're moving shady, you know, you're doing some bad stuff. You know what I mean? Some behind the back, like okay. sneaky stuff. So then there's a lot of some rap songs in the past just where they'll say the word shyst. And so one day CTC just said that. He's like, oh, it's getting shyst. And we thought that was, I just thought it was so funny. I was like, <laughs> you know what? We need some new, we need some new vocab. And we just started calling everything shyst. Every time someone makes an insane play, oh, that was a shyst play. He's, 
was he's more of a sneaky. Watching your he's tier list sneaky. and you replace the S tier with the shiest tier. That's the shiest tier. That's, that's just for the, the craftiest of mons, the craftiest Pokemon. <laughs> so, you know, usually with our lexicon, the things fall out of use after a year or so, but these two have showed no sign of stopping at all. So if I had to if I had to credit Shice, CTC. And then by extension, maybe 21 Savage, because I heard it in a song from him like seven, eight years ago. <laughs> but Incredible. as usual, credits, credits to CTC. He continues to make the lexicon go up. And I'm sure you all will be very excited for the upcoming Cypher verse of his. Because when you hear what's in there, you'll be very pleased to be an agent. I can't reveal any more, though. That sounds excellent. <laughs> There's one more. You often use the word Shamon. Which I, I believe that's an ad lib that Michael Jackson uses. Yeah, that's Michael Jackson's. Is that so, just you're a fan of Michael Jackson? Oh, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of Michael Jackson. Actually, nice. all, all of my all of my friends here are like we we always put Michael Jackson songs in the in the apartment and that kind of thing. Um, re recently we haven't really been, but last year we were in a big phase of just playing like the groovy songs. We were going out a lot, a lot of like you know afternoon outings, you know. We thought we were thought we thought we were cool. We thought that was the right soundtrack for the it's for the timeless. Vibes. Uh, timeless. My parents, when I was growing up, they loved Michael Jackson. I mean, they still do, but yeah, they same. used to play a lot of it, a lot of Michael Jackson. So I was always pretty into it. But the story behind Shimon is we were walking in New York City. We were going somewhere. It was not nothing crazy, just a regular day. And you know how there's always performances, plays, Broadway, etc. There were these huge signs of some Michael Jackson uh, musical, maybe like a uh, biography or something i don't know and the art of him was of him hitting the shimon pose uh where you know he's f leaning forward on his tiptoes holding his crotch holding his hat looking cool yeah, yeah and so it was like maybe four or five of us ctc was there too and we were like who can hit this pose who can do this so we're, in the, we're just continuously in public down the street going shimon trying to figure <laughs> out who can hit it the best on the street and we're like making each other take pictures <laughs> And it was like some absolute, like, complete tomfoolery. But it was like, who can hit the best Shimon? I've never even thought about this. And that, it just took over. It just completely, like, poisoned, it poisoned our That's vocabulary. Amazing. That's great. It just, it just, it was just that one sign. But I was like, man, and we got some good photos of all of us hitting it. I'm not going to lie. You know, you give everybody enough chances to hit hit the right Shimon and you'll get a good photo of so everybody. everybody won, I guess. You're everybody won. Everybody won. Everybody won. Everybody in my in my squad is capable of hitting the, the Shimon. So <laughs> I don't know if I'm gonna try it. I guess I'll have to give it a go. <laughs> don't worry. If we meet, you're gonna learn. It was it's something <laughs> something funny. And then I just started saying Shimon every time. Does that have a meaning oh. in the context of your videos? Like you just got Shimon to this. this <laughs> <laughs> no, people decided that. People this is, like people will tweet at me and be like, I just Shimon to some guy, and I'll be like, Oh, I had no idea. We turned it into a verb. <laughs> Let me write that down. Thank you for adding to the lexicon. <laughs> I don't know if Shimon even had a meaning from Michael Jackson. I doubt. No, nah, it. it's just like he's just ad living. It's just vibes. It's just vibes, right? He's just the goat. He's just the, he just created the word for no reason. <laughs> he's he's the goat. You know? It's he just it's made, has many meanings. Oh yeah, Michael Jackson. What's your yeah. favorite Michael Jackson song? It's between two of them. Heaven Can Wait is up there for sure. If you've heard that one, I think that one is beautiful. I've listened to that one like one million times. If I had to pick one to tie with that one, the one I used to listen to a lot in my childhood is Blame It on the Boogie. You know that song? That's, yeah, it's a great song. Classic, right? So, pretty basic one, but that one and Heaven Can Wait. Those are my two favorites. Good choices. I really like uh, Don't Stop Till You Get Enough. Mmm, always. He just had to... Michael Jackson has the best voice. Because when I used to play... I never listened to Michael Jackson when playing tournaments or nothing. I usually... when I, I don't really listen to music That's in general when idea. I play tournaments That's, anymore. I should listen to Michael when Jackson. I, <laughs> when I used to play, I would just listen to some like very like high-paced rap music or something like that. But I like the connection with music and playing, at least for me. Um, calms me down. Michael Jackson has a very like confident voice. It makes me feel like a boss. So I'll always like his music. It'll always make me feel like I'm in charge. Put on like a beat it or something. That's a that's a crazy yes, song. Of it literally, li beat just beat. You feel like the man, dude. I love his music. What do you think of Gen 9 OU in its current state with Terra and everything? Are you? I know you. You're one of the biggest supporters of Terra in some of your videos. For do you sure. still like the mechanic yeah, overall? Yeah, I still like the mechanic overall. I like Gen 9. I think it was getting a little bit stale uh, around the OLT meta, but that's also that's just the nature of OLT as well, where everybody is hyper fixated on being at the top of the ladder. So you see the same thing spammed over and over and over again. I think OLT playoffs is a bit more varied now from what I've watched. And DLC is going to also, well, when DLC comes out, the game is completely different now. 
because a lot of the old move tutor moves are back. They're saying Toxic is back. They're saying Scald is back, which I can't confirm on Scald, but Toxic apparently is back. So all these things will shake up the game a lot. Like it, we're going to play a massively different game come the 13th. From what we've seen so far in Gen 9, I'd say I'm satisfied. I don't think Terra is broken. I don't, I'm also not like, oh, if you think Terra is broken, you're stupid. I think I definitely was kind of too pro Terra at some point. I don't think Terra should be banned personally, but I definitely understand why some people have had enough of this mechanic. Like, I'm more open to people telling me now, like, oh, no, I don't like this mechanic. Like, I, I get it. I get it to a degree. There are definitely some interactions where it's like, this is so stupid. But I also think that because the metagame is often changing with all these DLC drops and whatnot, I do not want to ban this. I don't think this is something where it's so clearly broken. I think it is something that we should adapt to and just see. The game is only going to get crazier, right? This, this terrestrialize is fucking insane. No, we can all agree that terrestrialize is the most insane shit ever. Triple typing is like not real. Like this is just so, <laughs> it's just so fucking insane what they've introduced with this triple typing shit. Like, so, I mean, everybody agrees that like this is, at least Dynamax was very straightforward. It was obviously broken but yeah the, the mon comes in doubles its hp it boosts becomes everything ginormous. In your, right it becomes ginormous <laughs> this is like it puts on a hat but then it becomes one of 19 typings and it's just like oh dude i'm screwed nah i'm not uh i'm not too against terra or gen 9 i like gen 9 what how i rank it towards the other ones six and seven are better and it's a bit better than eight for me currently i love playing it watching is all right too but i actually the, the playing itself i have a lot of fun like i i ladder gen 9 uh, occasionally I haven't played recently but last two or three months I, I ladder for fun like I have some high ladder alts that like I don't show on YouTube just you know just to troll around have some fun now and then get like a little five minute battle I almost feel like for me the problem is more the gen 9 you've meta itself rather than Terra because actually there's some meta games where Terra doesn't feel as annoying to me sure I've played a bit of gen 9 ubers and before home dropped I was playing UU a lot and I feel like mm -hmm. in those meta games like Terra, when there's not like some dumb thing that can abuse it super hard and like win off it, it feels like you're making an actual decision every game. It's like kind of cool, I think. It, yeah. I think that the Gen Nano you meta is just kind of stupid. I, I don't like that. There's it's like weird. There's no defoggers and it's like. Oh, I agree with you on that. No defog is awful. A lot of options, but also some of the most basic options are limited now that yeah. we used to be just I, universal like defog and toxic uh, uh, i'll tell you one problem i actually have with the metagame and this is something i've like i tweeted about it too so the timestamps it's all it's all verifiable since the beginning i have been samurai plus golden go's biggest like hater i think that that core has destroyed the game a golden go to me is broken it is for sure broken to me and samurai having a move that sets up spikes is just not healthy like it completely goes against the game you're not supposed to damage and also get up a spike i mean that's just my own like it's insane it's insane that you can attack but it's, and make it's, a spike. it's 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 far too much to me dude i i like if i had to remove anything from this metagame it's first it's going to be golden go even if i think shit like backscalibur is more scary the pressure covert golden go puts on teams with the ability to terra into like five very good viable types that is one pokemon where i'm like this has just ruined the pot like so many pokemon's ability i just that's the one thing i really hate samurai plus gold samurai as a whole i would be very happy if it got banned not that it's by itself broken but that move i cannot get behind you should not be putting up a spike with a move um heavy duty boots for once has a very important role in the metagame because i think spikes are broken so spikes golden go samurai some combination of those i would love something to change because i hate seasonal sedge as a move the only way you beat it is if it misses. Something that annoys me at my modern Pokemon is like, sometimes the counterplay to stuff is super polarizing where it's like, oh yeah, you can um, counterplay spikes by just becoming immune to them completely with boots. But then it, it feels like yeah. it turns the game into like, some teams are built around spikes and then you're running five boots users. Like what the hell do you do? Yeah, yeah. And, and you're like, oh, did I just lose off harsh. the rip? Yeah, I agree with you. you. And then you start thinking, oh, this is a rock, paper, scissors meta. This is bullshit. And then, yeah. you know, exactly. <laughs> I know I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. So I, I would agree with you that nine something needs to we need some type of switch up i i don't like the how high every mon's usage is we got multiple 40 percenters uh i mean i guess it's cool that gambit gambit's now number one i think over tusk for the first time i believe yeah that did happen let me go that did happen right yeah um you're right so that's pretty cool but it just in general like i'm looking at these stats right now but the same top 10 for a while it's not going to change the top five of gambit tusk val golden go samurai should not change Maybe Bax goes up, but the the those five, their opportunity cost is like, like Samurott H opportunity cost is so skewed towards the user. Same with Golden Go, that 
There's like no reason not to use those Pokemon to me. I think Iron Valiant is like my favorite Pokemon in Gen 9. Oh, dude, that guy is my ace. <laughs> There's no better like like booster revenge kill panic button than that guy. It's incredible and, what yeah. it's able to do. I like all its options too. You can get creative. Oh yeah, definitely. You got Encore, Special, um, SD, Mix, Destiny Bond. Like this, that guy's amazing. Scald being back is going to be in a whole thing. What do you What do you think about between Scald and Toxic? What do you think is going to have a bigger effect on the meta game? I think that's scald. the two biggest ones. Yeah, I think so too. Just a lot of these guys like Pex have doubled now in value. Like Scald's always been kind of broken. Toxic is fine, I think. Like there's heaps of counterplay to it. But Scald is just so safe. I think the you saying safe is really what it boils down to. Scald is one of the most like low cost moves to throw out. It's strong. It usually comes off a stab because it's from water type Pokemon. Water type Pokemon always have a good special attack stat too, for the most part. I think Covert Gold just got like 10 times better as well, now that you can't burn it. Yeah, at least we have Covert uh, Cloak now, which is like the first counterplay to Scald ever. Mm -hmm. That'll be relevant. Yeah, I think so too. Um, also, we'll have, uh, I mean, Garg in general likes to Terra into a Fairy type, Water type, etc. So that'll always be one of the Pokemon that is able to take the, uh, the bulky waters and use them as setup fodder. Water Garg is notorious for beating all other water types. We're also going to have Clef coming back. I don't know, honestly, what Clef's value is going to be. I mean, it's still Clefable, so I'm definitely not going to count it out. But I haven't, in my own head, I haven't been able to really piece together what I see Clefable. I think it's going to be some calm mind shit, but I haven't fully Clefable been able to tear it on. Imagine that. Yeah, exactly. It can Terra, <laughs> so it should be. And, and Moonblast is still good coverage. We don't have too many fairy types. So, like, we haven't really even been able to see the effects of fairy types on the meta we have val which is a good one we've seen sylveon a few times in tournament which is also good but the calm mind moon blaster clef i'm curious to see i was about to say a spathra but i remember it's a psychic type it just terra's fairy yeah I just terra fairies fairy type. oh no, i forgot about that monster is pokemon I'm sure Clefable will be good it has so many options it'll be able to fill it's just yeah i wonder what oh, it'll yeah. actually end up using uh, glyscore is another one that's coming back so we're gonna definitely see terra glyscore that should be a decent skull sponge, assuming it's still spadesque. Sounds like Gen 5. Glyscore. Would you describe this like all the counterplay around skull, everything centering around skull? Yeah, dude. At least burn is down to 6%. Because when burn was in 12% in Gen 5, that yeah, was like a crazy. burn something, sand is up, you click protect. Now that Pokemon's at 60%. Like, doesn't even make sense. Wanted to ask you about your merchandise. I think it's really cool. I like that you have Appreciate like it. these standalone designs that have nothing to do with Pokemon. Just, is it. fashion like something you're interested in? For sure. We've always even talked about it on the channel and stuff. Like when we're just talking about regular stuff, not Pokemon, just random conversations and whatnot in like a group live. Like we'll talk about clothes and stuff. That's always been a big thing to me and my friends. Not like having like the coolest clothes, but just talking about like clothes, putting on cool outfits, going out outside, just walking around type thing. Nothing, when, like nothing like overly expensive or like exuberant, just... I mean, it's fun to it's fun to put on a cool shirt. Thinking about cool your outfits. Pants. Yeah, like that's always been something fun for me. Not even in like a try hard way. Just you like you like dressing good. You feel good, that kind of thing. And I've been blessed that all my friends are pretty into it too. I mean, it's like a cultural thing too. It ties in with music, sports, all that stuff. When I grew up, shoes were everything. You have to have cool shoes. It wasn't until I got to like eighth or ninth grade when my brothers were like, "You gotta have a cool hat now." It's like, oh no, the meta game changed. I thought it was just <laughs> shoes. <laughs> I was like, "There's an update," but. And then just as time goes on, I, I don't even think I, I care about what I wear as much as I used to when I was younger. But obviously, I have more confidence and understanding of the world now. But to tie it all back to merch, I never really cared too much in the past about like making merch. The first agency collection is because we were working on the agency branding. We had the pyramid as part of the branding, and I thought that was pretty cool. And then I was like, I want to try to make something completely unrelated to mons as a whole not even comparing to other people's merch everybody has their own thing with merch and not everybody even makes pokemon related merch i'm not the first person to make merch that has nothing to do with pokemon despite being from that community for us it's we want to make something that we would want to wear that's just the number one thing so whenever we make any design and when i say we it's usually me and my boy sama cooking but we have a group chat with like a bunch of my good friends like ctc of course my boy suave uh joey we always get uh you know feedback just you know want to know what guys opinions are like hey do you guys like this do you think this is something cool do you think this is something you'd wear it's like they'll be brutally honest but it's 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 good that way right and know the full extent of where we're gonna go with this but i do believe that the agency brand Lejean's clothing that kind of thing i do think that we're going to end up having a store in like a couple of years wow that's I, I, cool. like i really i really do think that is what's going to end up happening because with every drop we have uh we continue to just go higher and higher um 
and we've done a pretty it's good a job of the yeah and i'm very pleased uh this is something that i i, I don't know i just didn't even think about something like this a couple of years ago uh, it just sort of happened and then i was like let me give this the proper attention it deserves let me actually take a a real interest in the business aspect of this so we do a lot of business stuff just going over the numbers a lot of people to communicate with and for me it like it was cool because i love pokemon i love this game and then i was able to sort of get a look into like business aspect of just stuff like this is a lot of distribution uh based stuff that me and of course i've talked about him so much but my boy sama he's basically my partner uh no he is my partner for sure and all this clothing stuff keeps me grounded because i can't do this alone i used to be able to do it alone uh when it was just you know shout out the agency but it has gotten to a point where i just cannot do it alone it's so much work um but i love being able to put my time into something like that because it's like oh i'm still building on my youtube my everything but i feel like i'm getting real business knowledge biz like communication knowledge you know how to present myself how to get what i want how to know my worth value all that stuff uh and I'm, I'm happy. I mean, I don't talk too much about my personal life, but uh, I went to university for uh, finance, consumer economics, and uh, also information systems, but I never really did anything with my degrees. I do love business. I had some internships and stuff like that, but I'm happy that it kind of wrapped around. I have a business related, like a business centric mind. So I'm happy it kind of wrapped around and I love what, what this has opened up for me. And it's never going to stop the merch and everything. We've been able to keep putting up the quality, the designs, and from here on out, it's just going to be going bigger and bigger. Next, we want to drop polos, varsity jackets, just move on from t-shirts and shorts and pants. Maybe I'll have to get a polar. That sounds cool. No doubt. I love, yeah, I've been wearing a lot of polos lately. I love a good polo. That's cool, man. I like that uh, you got like another project besides YouTube. I mean, sometimes YouTube can be a bit stressful with your for sure, for sure. income is tied to the success of your videos. Sometimes it's like fluctuates. Oh, it's inconsistent. For sure, dude. Again, it can really hurt your brain too. You can be thinking like, oh, well, what's even the point of posting this if it doesn't do blah, blah, blah. And then you can get, kind of get yourself into a trap, sort of forget why you're even doing it. I've been thinking about doing merch as well. I'll see how that For goes. Sure. The Iron just... Mugulus merch. <laughs> that, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly. No, absolutely. Merch is a, uh, I do, I, for me, and I, I've said this to my friends too, with merch, the number one thing to me was I wanted to detach it from the channel. Or, or almost have it as like a compliment. I know my channel is a huge part of the merch. It's not like they're two separate beings. But however, I do think it's really good, and this is for anybody that makes merch, to sort of se separate it a bit from the channel. Yeah, I definitely think with, with merch, it has to be somewhere in between, like something that your audience can connect with, but also if someone who's not in your audience saw it, they would be they would like it as well. It's got to be like a bit of both. Overall, I just really want the people to and to like what they buy i want them to be excited when they buy it i love clothes like i love not even from like a super materialistic perspective just like what we were talking about putting something nice on just feels good it feels good to be excited about something i think the worst thing that can happen in clothes wise for me is i open it up and i'm not happy with it or it fits poorly or something like that it's just i want people to be excited with what they can get and merch comes and goes right once a year it's only a very limited thing too which i think also adds to the fun eventually i hope that we will get to a point where we're able to do like an evergreen and have uh, like a shop open and stuff which i was talking about we'll eventually get to that point but for now i really like the system we have about every year we're able to focus our time and energy on to making the best drop possible and uh unfortunately this year we had some distribution issues uh so we weren't able to get the full supply of some of the items we wanted to drop we dropped our summer uh collection which i'm really pleased with but i'm most excited for the next one which would be varsity jackets we were hoping we would be able to drop that this year but you know how it goes that sounds great i'm excited for the future yeah i appreciate you asking about it too it's always uh good to talk about and yeah like i just really want to stress that thing about merch again if anybody's watching there they make youtube videos they're interested in making uh merch clothing whatever the case is the big thing to me yeah make something that the people just want based on what it is you don't have to overthink it either that that's a big thing the merch to be less oh this is blunders merch than oh this is the agency brand it takes time though it's been four years for me still doesn't have its full identity right but everything takes time it's going to be one of the biggest fashion organizations of all time give it a few years i hope so i hope so i think i think uh with time everything you know that's my favorite part about youtube i talked about it with one of my buddies uh mr jambed 
complete legend. I talked with him a couple of days ago and I told him because we, we just had a discussion about uh, social media and that kind of thing. We were actually just talking about some just some regular stuff. And I was like, yeah, because I, I, I don't have an Instagram um, and he doesn't either. And we were just talking. I was like, yeah, I don't really be on those. I'm like, most of my time is on Twitter and YouTube. And we were talking about how and maybe not like our brains, but our time on the Internet. And because I mean, I've been on the Internet since I was like a kid and using it more than the average person. Or that's true for like 90 percent of the people who watch our videos. I just remember telling him, I'm like, yeah, I feel like we got our like social media fix via YouTube and that kind of thing. Like, I feel like it it really satisfied a lot of stuff. And I said that, in my opinion, the reason I love YouTube so much is that it feels like a 10 year because I've been doing this since 2013. I feel like it's been like a like a pyramid that I just continuously add a brick to every time. Every time I upload a vid, I feel like I'm adding a brick. Every time I do I add like another tournament game, I feel like I'm adding a brick. I never feel like I'm breaking it down. I never feel like I'm like destroying it. I always feel like I'm slowly, slowly adding. So if I look back to where my channel is five years ago, my channel is bigger than it is today. Maybe it's not as big as it could have been had I given more attention to certain spots, but that always keeps me really pleased with YouTube. And it also cements to me that I'm never going to like randomly just shut down my YouTube or even if I like take a huge break from YouTube, I'm not just going to like let it totally die because it's you're always just slowly adding to it, making it bigger, making it better. It doesn't have to be some fast thing. Your catalog continues to go up. It's like a tranquil feeling for me. I never I never worry like, oh, I mean, it took me forever to hit 100K subscribers. It took me years. Um, but I never let it be like a super mental hurdle to me. I was never like, damn, why won't my channel go up? Why can't I hit this person's subscribers? Blah, 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 blah. It's, it's just a brick by brick thing. Yeah, I got to remember that too. Sometimes yeah, for sure. Because it's, it, oh, for sure, dude. It's so easy, dude. Like I'm, and I fall victim to it too, where I'm like, damn, bro. Like they don't want to see this. Like I thought this was fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we all, we all fall victim to it, man. It's a numbers game. No, everybody hates posting a video and then you go to YouTube studio and it says, this is a 10 out of 10 video. This is your worst video of the week. Oh yeah, it happened to me recently. A video called the, the Beauty of Gen 3 Tyranitar. I thought that would be a classic, but it was my 10 <laughs> out of 10. That would be a classic, right? <laughs> like, what happened? That's, that's me, me when I post a video with my favorite Pokemon Glaceon and I think it's everybody else's favorite too. <laughs> Isn't that a popular Pokemon? It's a, Dude, it's, it's, a it's hit or miss. Maybe I'm not good with it. <laughs> Maybe the competitive community isn't fond of it. Competitive community, is, competitive community has some Pokemon that they just fucking hate. <laughs> All right. It's getting a bit late over here. And sure. we've been talking for a while. So, But I wanted to end on one last question. Uh, sure. So a friend of mine has been a fan of yours for a while. And he said that... His name is Munby, by the way, if you've seen him around. I know Munby. He said that on some of your old Twitch streams, when you were getting tilted on Showdown, you would just close the game and instead start playing Bionicle Heroes. <laughs> 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 which i thought was really funny when, when he said when you said that the way you started it when he said he said back on twitch when you'd get mad i was like oh my god jimothy's gonna say something really bad i was like i got scared no. for a sec. did you do something really bad also <laughs> no, i didn't do anything bad it was still on streaming but i was just like mm, i don't know i was like i'm not the man i was five years ago on twitch jimothy before you say anything <laughs> nah though uh yes a lot of the t <laughs> dude i used to have a because twitch <laughs> my youtube streaming is a lot more professional but my twitch streaming was like i mean i used to get like banned on twitch not for doing anything bad it would be for like copyright like i'd play like some new album that just came out like someone would be on my stream be like drake's got a new song play oh, it yeah. and then umg umg would strike my shit. <laughs> or, or i'd be on there and i'd be like let's watch uh ash versus tobias and then i get banned <laughs> because i'm playing anime on stream <laughs> but the good thing with twitch is that like their rules are bullshit so they'll always just like let you back on um but yeah i had a lineup of games for when mons just pissed me off so bionicle is actually a decent game it's like funny and i don't know why there's such a big bionicle fan base because when i was growing up none of my friends were into that shit. but oh, so many of my viewers are like extreme bionicle lore masters and are able to tell and sama sama is like addicted to bionicle and knows everything ever about the game so i've had him just talk to me for like 30 minutes about this shit, and i'm like dude what is going like what is going on so that became one of their favorite games to watch. Like it was this old 2005 story mode Bionicle. I like that one. The other games in my arsenal that I like to show on stream are Snake, uh, which is like one of my favorite games. Yes, just the game where you eat the thing and you get bigger. I could play that okay. game for like- Classic. Uh, I could play that, I could play that for hours on end. I like Minesweeper, but I'm very bad at it. So the few times I have shown it on stream, I get destroyed and then everyone's like, you don't even know what you're doing. <laughs> and I'm like, my bad, I really don't. 
Um, and then my favorite game is Fortnite, unironically. I play that. I haven't played in a week, but I like to play Fortnite. I truly believe it makes my Pokemon skills better. Like during World Cup of Pokemon, I didn't even really test or practice too much. I mean, I was definitely in form, but I kept telling my team, like, somebody hop on and play Fortnite with me. That's how I hit my ultimate level in Pokemon. I was telling them, I'm like, it's all about the cognitive. <laughs> I, I really like Fortnite. Like a lot of my friends even think I'm joking when I say I like Fortnite. They're just like, oh, is this like a meme? And I'm like, no, I actually really like this game. <laughs> so I got to give a shout out to Fortnite. I used to love Melee too. I uh, I still oh, do love it. Cool. Um, I, I broke my thumb uh, last January, so I haven't really been able to play. But I, I would say that I was pretty good. Um, I used to play. I too. like my. Uh, yeah, I, I like I I used to play a lot of uh, net play stuff. I want to say in twenty like sixteen seventeen, but then I like got bored. But I I really had a huge Smash phase where I just loved Smash more than Pokemon too. Uh, I never really was like a big go to tournaments guy. I've been to like two or three tournaments. I think one of them I went like one and two and one of them I went two and two. So I really can't be mad. It was like at my school or in my area. One of them was in my area, one of them was at my school. Now that I remember clearly, but no, the game is fun. Like I, I even remember, cause you know, in, uh, in my, my university was pretty big and Smash is not some underground thing. Everybody knows what Smash is. So this was like four or five years ago. And there's kids playing Smash, like in the common area in one of the buildings of my school. I'm with my girlfriend at the time. And I'm like, yo, you have to wait. I haven't played Smash in forever. I got to play. And she's like, we got something to do. And I'm like, no, I really got to like, I really gotta play. And I played with those kids for like 35 minutes and I made her wait. And I was like, this is like, this, dude, Smash is the best game ever. <laughs> like, I, I love I loved Melee. Like, I really, I could play that for like five hours straight. It just sucks because I fucking broke my thumb. But once it heals, I'm coming back. I used to play net play with my boy McMegan, and he beat me with Marth all the time. I used to play with my boy Amfuga, who is now known as Wally, aka the greatest Peach of all time. And I love Smash's uh, skill curve. Like I love that at the top, they're so much better than the guys that are just one level below them, who are so much better than everybody below them. It's a crazy I think the, game. Yeah. I mean, it's a crazy game. And when I say Smash, I particularly mean Melee. I'm not too knowledgeable about the other ones at all. I mean. You love the game. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I had a phase where I was super into it, but I was always average. No, I, I think the I mean, yeah, on the, gr on the grand scheme, I'm very average too, for sure, if not below average, just because the, the skill curves in this are outrageous. To be good at that game, it requires like all of your energy. It's crazy. With uh, You have to I think you're right. It does. Yeah. And there's a huge like uh, mental muscle connection from that for that game too. I like Pokemon because there's no tech skill. I mean, some people would say that's like bad. It's less skillful, but it no, evens the playing field literally. in a way where I don't have to grind for like 10 hours to be able to play. I can just that's how stop playing. Yeah, that's how I feel about Showdown. Sometimes uh, so someone said to me a, a while ago and it stuck with me and I started saying it, that to them Showdown is just like a Candy Crush style game. They're like, dude, I get a five minute ladder match. And I go around my day. They're like, I don't really care what it's like. It's, like, it's just like a little fun thing. And I'm like, that's a good way of looking at it. It's very low stress physically and i mean it's as stressful mentally as you want to make it but like smash love the game but there are times i play for 10 15 minutes and my hands are fucking hurting you know all right i think we'll leave it at that thank you so much for taking the time oh yeah thank you for having me man i thought we had some pretty good discussions um, some enlightening just about just about everything i learned a bit more about the english language <laughs> some new words <laughs> some, some, some new words you might see them in webster's 2024 edition <laughs> yeah. but I, I can't confirm though when you're on the cover of forbes in a few years <laughs> You're gonna change the dictionary, dude. I would say, I would say, it was, it was that one interview. It was that one interview with Jimothy where he told me to explain myself, and it just, it propelled me. To this is about to get heights. a million views, real quick. It is, it is. How the English dictionary changed in 2023. That's, Boom. Here's, here's how. Right. Here's why. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. No doubt, Catch bro. You later. Thank you for having me.